Please rise. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. It's great to see you all here, ready to celebrate. Soon we'll be celebrating the Nativity. We are almost there. So thank you for being here. Our time of preparation for the birth of our Savior is nearly complete as we light the fourth candle of this wreath. May its light remind us to open our hearts so that the love of Christ might be born anew in us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom.
Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ, your Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. From the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night, the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went and I have destroyed all your enemies before you, and I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old since the time I first appointed judges over my people, Israel. I will give you rest from your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord. Shall be with you in my name, your 
From the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you according to my gospel in the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the external God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace. The Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. And he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her 
who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. So it is this fourth Sunday of Advent, and we have now lit all the candles of our Advent wreath. The birth of Jesus is imminent. In a few days, it will be Christmas, and we will be celebrating one of the most important events in human history. Last Sunday, the readings urged us to remember God's faithfulness and rejoice. Today, we begin our final preparations to welcome the infant king into our hearts, since the human heart is the Lord's favorite dwelling place. In today's first reading, King David is concerned about creating a dwelling place for the Lord. He imagines building a temple for the Ark of the Covenant. He wants to erect something strong and permanent that is more worthy of the Lord than the tent that currently was housing the ark. But the Lord lets King David in on a little secret. God doesn't need David's efforts. It is the Lord who raised David up to be strong and worthy. The Lord also makes it known that he will establish a different kind of house. It is the house of David, a lineage of descendants that will share a special relationship with the Lord and endure forever. The Lord's true dwelling place will not be a building of wood and stone. His dwelling place will be a house of human flesh in the hearts of his people. Hundreds of years go by after the reign of David. The Jewish people wait fervently, hoping for the fulfillment of God's promise to establish forever the royal house of David. This is where we enter St. Luke's Gospel story of the Annunciation. The Archangel Gabriel announces that the heir to the throne of David is to be born. This is the promised Messiah, the one who will fulfill the prophecies of old. Yet it seems so unlikely. Mary is an unknown maiden. Herein lies the immense drama of this moment. So much is offered in such an unexpected way. The salvation of the world lies with the decision of one young girl. This is one of the most often painted scenes from the New Testament. Artists are endlessly fascinated with the surprise and drama of it. 
Mary's humble and open response to the Lord secures our future. In her, the Lord is making a dwelling place. Mary's womb is to become a literal home for the Son of God. In a few short days, we will recall and give thanks that God chose to live among us in human form. With the birth of Jesus, we receive an invitation for our hearts to become dwelling places for the living God. Mary is our model and our teacher. She shows us how to be obedient in faith with her simple words. May it be done to me according to your word. The long-awaited descendant of David makes his home in her. We have the opportunity to mirror Mary's faith and welcome Jesus into our hearts. Just as we do a quick vacuuming before company arrives, it is time to do a final check to make sure we are ready to welcome him. Spend some time today in quiet reflection what things still need to be cleaned out of our hearts to make a suitable dwelling place for the living God? How can we show our willingness to let the Lord in? Are we ready to surrender to God like Mary? May it be done to me according to your word. May God bless you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was encountered the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we wait patiently for Christ's birth, to let, let us offer prayers for our needs and the needs of others. And our response is, come, O Lord, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, 
May Catholics who are returning find a church celebrating their return with a loving embrace. We pray to the Lord. For our parish, help us to be better at caring for the cold, hungry, abused, exploited, and needy of the world. We pray to the Lord. For our world, may the hearts of those wounded by injustice be healed, and may justice and peace reign forevermore. We pray to the Lord. For our nation, watch over all who are suffering from the pandemic. Give them strength to endure just a few more months until its end. We pray to the Lord. And for the sick, may God's healing love help them with their burdens and bless those who care for them. We pray to the Lord. For the repose of the soul of Nick Davis, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. And for our beloved dead, John Logan Eldridge, Hugo Hernandez, and Benny Paul Anderson, Jr. May they experience the joy of God's presence. Help their families and all who are sad, struggling, or mourning in this festive season receive consolation. We pray to the Lord. And for your own intentions held in the silence of your hearts. God of all, renew us with your love and help us to be free from fear and anxiety so that we may rejoice at the coming of your Son. Hear these prayers and grant them through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. and that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the Holy Church. Let us pray. May the Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as the as just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, true Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. and all you had created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather our people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy, these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance we you elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed, blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pagan church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Gregory John Harmeyer, our Archbishop, Bernard and Joel, our auxiliary bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you had gained for your own. Listen graciously to the family, to the prayers of the family you had gathered here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not but only say the word and my soul shall be. If you're joining us for this Mass online, please pray this prayer at this time. My Jesus, on the day of my baptism, you poured your love into my heart through the Holy Spirit, who unites me eternally to you. Through that same Spirit, I pledge my love and adore you, present in your most holy body and blood. Though I cannot consume you in this sacred banquet, let me be consumed by your complete desire for me so that my longing for you may be filled by your love alone and your mercy overflow through me into this world so in need. Amen. If you have not joined us physically present for Mass lately, please take a moment to look carefully at the communion instructions in your worship aid especially using sanitizer if you have it, and certainly keeping your mask intact until stepping to the side away from the priest. Thank you.
Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I want to wish you Merry Christmas yet, still some few days, so we'll give a, a nice, you know, greeting, Christmas greeting on the day. How's that? <laughs> All right. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you.